everybody, it's High Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's having a good evening. So, in recent time, we did the August Outlook here. It seems like uh, you guys have uh, taken well to that. Thank you for that, by the way. And towards the end of that video, we actually talked about the tropics a little bit. We're going to go a little bit more in depth on this one. I would have actually done this yesterday, but considering the fact that things are expected to stay quiet over the next week, I wasn't really too keen on trying to put a video up literally a day or two after. I try not to give you guys the same video twice if I can avoid it. But in this sense, though, I do notice an uh, interesting feature within the pattern here. And we talked about it in brief detail, but we're going to talk about it just a tiny bit more in depth in today's video here. So make sure you guys are hitting that like button, by the way. Also, have the, uh, also hit that notification bell on if you're already subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, definitely do that as well. Uh, also, with the uh, recent influx in uh, subscribers here and also viewers in general, I've noticed only half of you guys are actually subscribed to the channel. Like, what's up with that, man? But anyway, though, we're going to go ahead and get into some of the dynamics that you would look for when it comes to tropical development. We dropped a video kind of explaining what to look for and what models to use in uh, brief detail. Video, the link to that video will be in the top right corner, by the way. But key component to tropical systems is actually wind shear and believe it or not it's different from tornadoes where with tornadoes you're kind of looking for strong wind shear especially a strong directional shear you don't want that with hurricanes it's actually the opposite the lighter the wind shear the better it also allows those thunderstorms to breathe it allows the storms to grow taller whereas with tornadoes it's a little bit different get into that in another video the exact difference in between hurricanes and tornadoes but in any case though you want warm waters of course which we already know we have o over the entire Atlantic as a whole here at this point now which is right about on schedule we would say considering the fact that we're starting to get towards peak hurricane season but the wind shear right now if we look at our current picture we're looking about 42 hours out still pretty strong the areas of orange and red pretty self-explanatory strong winds across the board here for most of the Atlantic but as we continue to move forward here, notice the trend though. We start to see we start to see a little bit more clearing out of that said wind shear, especially over towards this region here off of the West African coast. This is actually what's called the main development region over the tropics here. A lot of tropical systems will come from this area. In fact, Hurricane Barrel actually came from this area, and that's why it strengthened so quickly above average temperatures with the uh, sea surface over here and light wind shear definitely aided in barrels development and as we get towards the end of the month here this is the evening of the 30th in eastern time you can see wind shear is starting to lighten up across that region even across the other regions like the gulf and the caribbean as well so at some point while we have enjoyed a nice little period of quiet i do think that we are going to start to see an increase in activity once again too again like i said before right on schedule considering August, September are right around the corner here and usually considered the peak of hurricane season. Need I remind you also the outlook that we've been given for this year being pretty aggressive with the amount of name storms that we have. We've had we've had three right now, which is about average, but considering how how much above of an average year we're expected, I think that we're about to see a notable increase in activity. Will we reach the same number that we got in the initial outlook? Still yet to be seen, but expect an I would say, at least from right now, expect an increase in activity here. Definitely seeing some signals here across the board from the GFS ensemble that kind of indicate an increase in activity here, especially as we get further along into August. We can look as far out as about the first week right now. So another thing that we like to look at when it comes to the tropics here, <coughs> where you look at the moisture content towards the mid levels of the atmosphere. Mid levels of the atmosphere are very key when it comes to the tropics as well. And what I'm seeing right now, of course, is there's a lot of dry air coming into play across that main devel development region in particular. And this also kind of hampers tropical development. But as time goes on here, we start to see some of that dry air begin to move off here. And that starts to set that stage once again for maybe a couple of tropical systems come into play you can even see a slight little look here if i go back you can almost see a little bit of spin here 
from a couple of these little features that are coming off the West African coast here. So I'm curious to see how those develop. I haven't seen anything like that this year as of right now in regards to uh, any sort of uh, weather systems coming off West African coast, but this usually is a sign that we could see some development here. I do think dry air still could be somewhat of a factor, but the fact that we're starting to see that dry air move does kind of help go along with that hypothesis that we could see a few storms start to develop here as we get towards the very end of this month and heading into August here. So like I said, right about on schedule here, we'll have to see how things pan out from that point, but definitely seeing a look that, that uh, kind of piques my interest as well as probably many other weather enthusiasts and meteorologists alike. So if we go ahead and take a look also at what our vorticity is looking like, we're also seeing a pretty similar signal too, especially, and here's the date right here, by the way, for anyone that uh, hasn't seen it yet. This is towards the 25th. Right now, this is when the pattern's a little bit more unfavorable. What you want to look at is over towards the West African coast here, and you want to look for these little yellow areas. If you start to see a little um, contour line here or an isobar, pop up around this that's definitely a point of interest right now you don't really see much of them but you're seeing more and more energy starting to pop off of the west african coast here especially as we get towards the end of this month see a couple different features i'm kind of i'm kind of suspicious of what will happen with this one this seems like the most organized feature so far i do think at the moment right now this ridge at the moment might slightly hinder development but of course further out we go the the uh, less confidence you have in uh, the forecasting models because you get updates every six to 12 hours especially with the ensembles so it's these are very much prone to changing i guess that's really the the that's really the best way to put it for lack of better term here but another little uh key piece that i like to use here when i'm doing these outlooks here is the ensemble member here. This looks at uh, the potential for low pressure center areas here. And you look for these numbers in the red, these are low pressure areas. The blue numbers are high pressure. So high pressure, good, low pressure, bad. So basically what I'm seeing here in this case is I'm seeing an increase in those low pressure areas, mainly off that Western part of Africa here. I don't see a particularly organized area at the moment but considering what i was seeing before where we weren't seeing anything i've actually gone back in time here you don't see quite as much in the way of activity here but seeing that little bit of an increase here and like i said i really think that dry air is going to play more of a part more so than the, more so than the uh wind shear here but still seeing that little bit of an uptick here does kind of cause me to raise a brow a little bit here <clears throat> If we uh, look on different models here, I can actually show that um, we're seeing a little bit of agreement here. This is us looking at the European Ensemble model here. I normally do this in a picture-in-picture uh, -picture format, but I actually kind of forgot while, while I was editing this video, so I just figured, you know what, I'm just going to do it the old school way today. But again, just like we saw with the GFS Ensemble here, European ensemble is looking pretty identical. Actually, the wind shear is a little bit more impressive to the south here, but as a whole, you can tell that uh, things are a little bit lighter over here towards the main development region once more, and even lighter over towards the Caribbean. So again, really thinking that there's going to be a point of interest. There's an increase in uh, high pressure areas over here towards the uh, with the uh, European ensemble here. Something to keep note of here as I continue to go through these models. Again, pretty much a similar deal here with the dry air as well. Oh, went a little too fast. But you can see that dry air is still pretty dominant over the main development region. And again, I think this is going to be the main factor that kind of slows some of the tropical potential down, especially as we look over towards this, this sector of the main development here. Just a lot of Saharan dust just creeping its way in here. But... I still think there could be a couple of pockets where we could get a storm if it develops itself well enough, It'll wrap itself up in enough of a moisture, co of a, uh, moisture cocoon to keep itself 
sustained here. That's actually kind of what happened with barrel here. But in any case, right now, I don't immediately see the threat for a new system forming within the next couple of weeks here. But again, like I said before, these models update pretty often. And if things change, of course, we'll be making another video to keep up, to stay up to date, so to speak. But <clears throat> if we go ahead and look at the uh, European ensemble, so my voice is cracking a little bit. <clears throat> but you can also see a very similar look to what we saw with the GFS ensemble. Pretty much seeing piece of energy almost nonstop coming off of the West African coast here, but not really seeing anything immediately organized. It's not that these pieces of energy seem like they're being torn apart, though. I do think that, again, this has a lot to do with that dry air. So last piece that we're going to look at here again, just like we looked at with the GFS ensemble, here's the European ensemble, and I'm going too fast again. You can see increase in amount of low pressure center probabilities within these areas still nothing in particular that catches my eye or that's greatly organized at this point like i said i think that dry air that we're going to be getting from the saharan is going to slow things down ever so slightly there are a couple areas here that kind of interest me ever so slightly and over towards the gulf in particular but like i said I haven't seen anything in particular that has really kind of caught my interest just yet. This is the first real look I've had here. This is towards August 4th, and this is over towards the Florida Keys. Even so, I'm not sure if I'm willing to latch onto that yet. I really try to look for more model agreement than anything else. Sometimes you can look at one model run and it'll get particularly aggressive. So this is why I'm not really into promoting the, the quote unquote doomsday scenario, so to speak. While this does pique my interest, right now this is only showing on one model. If this shows on the GFS Ensemble, and I haven't really seen it yet, then we'll uh, talk about this more. I think we'll probably do an update video within the next three days or so. It really depends on what goes on with the weather in the U.S., which is pretty calm right now. So expect an update soon. But in any case, though, that's an interesting look right there for sure. And we'll be, <clears throat> and of course, as you know, we'll be making further updates on this and just the lower 48 in general. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for letting me ramble at you about the weather. And I will see you guys very soon. Until then, take care and have a good night.